Hi everyone, welcome to our behind the scenes section. In today's installment, we're gonna have a look at this uh, weekly number four image. As you can see, this is a quite simple image with uh, a lot of small details that are quite interesting and, uh, and some tiny stuff that could be interesting for your modeling skills next time. So if we have a look at the 3D modeling here, can see the image. Um, so it's a frontal view with the, obviously the backdrop uh, was not directly inserted in the uh, in the image, and uh, you can see the HDRI. In terms of uh, framing, so there's nothing really special. Uh, this is the final framing. The composition is pretty straightforward. There's like this interesting uh, area here, so that was going to be lit, you can't see it here. And there, then also a bit of a really, really soft and uh, indirect lighting for the overall, uh, flat, the overall level. The idea was to have this sort of uh, deconstructing ceiling uh, as we get closer to the facade and have these guys sort of taking their break uh, in the middle of the day. In terms of modeling, funny thing was to that was to do was the carpet here, where basically the idea was to um, so it was basically a whoops maybe not that guy um, which one can I use that guy basically the idea was to use a bend modifier that sort of enables us to get this uh, sort of a rolled up rug. And then I still edit, edited the poly to get some uh, slight variation. Also here, you can see that uh, I've used a bit of noise. You can see it in the final rendering because uh, there are slight variation here in terms of uh, like you can see some slight bump uh, in the uh, and the model, which are quite interesting uh, in terms of a variety. In terms of modeling still, there was uh, like a simple, I could have done like, uh, could have been interesting to do the the, the ceiling with the um, raid clone, but uh, I did it by hand, which was actually still quite quick because I knew what I wanted to do. So there are like rods here that sort of hold the, the whole thing. Here they're using a sweep modifier with the uh, a section that I draw. I'm not really sure where it is. I must be here. Here, sorry. Yeah, so the, these guys were used for the um, the windows, and these guys were used for the 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 ceiling. So as you can see, that guy was another version. Uh, here. Whoops, not that guy. That guy. If we look at the uh, the windows, it's a really like tiny, like you can't really see it, but still it's quite interesting and important to have proper um, proper modeling of your frames because otherwise it's not going to look like it's going to pop out that it's not really properly modeled. Uh, here are also other stuff that were modeled using a a spline uh, with a with a spiral modifier. So really, really simple. Here are some chair, uh, I think it's already made. These were uh, done by hand for most of them. In terms of lighting, it was really simple. There's an overcast sun here to get indirect lighting. And uh, there's also, if you look at it here, uh, the uh, staircase here with a simple, uh, simple sphere that sort of uh, gives this interesting light on and this side here and a nice cast shadow here so it sort of gives it more interesting uh, overall lighting to the image. In terms of texture there's nothing really complicated uh, there are a couple of uh, there's the concrete here so this one is the rough one that is used for the, the columns here so there's um, 
where is it? That guy is the diffuse, so there's a, a bit of a variation added with the derp map that is uh, mapped differently on the on the on the objects, and another here that is used that is a little bit rough, more rough than the the original one to get a nice bump map. The idea here is to get a, a better um, sort of seamless because I didn't get like the a proper proper texture to do so at first. Same goes with the composite here, with the which is used for the diffuse and ref reflection glossiness. Here we have the original map and two different dirt maps that sort of add with uh, three different UV mappings. So that way we have, if we have a look at it like that, we can see that. Uh, so we have this guy, we have this guy that is tiled like that, and this guy that is tiled the other way. And in that way, you actually don't get any noticeable um, tiling on your image, which is sort of what we are aiming for. Then there's nothing really... Here there was a bit of a modeling for the, the railing but for some reason I, and there was also the perforation here, I've added some inconsistencies and uh, dirt maps of like fingerprints and stuff like that, which you can notice a little bit and there's noise map to sort of make it a uh, little bit less um, um, visible every time. Beside that, I think uh, there's nothing much to say. There was like all these sort of cable stuff that are simple splines with a, a render, rendering, uh, enabling viewport and in render with a simple plastic material that's nothing really specific. And that guy here, I think, is nothing, is not really uh, complicated as well. I really tend to use extremely simple material because, well, it's. I think everything relies more on lighting and composition, and you can actually get a simple material to look great, even if you, like, even if it's not that complicated in terms of how it works. Here you can see there's a, a two like the the base material, then a bit of dirt map, then same goes with the reflection. So and there's quite a bit of bump map so that you get a, a nice rough looking material, which is like that guy here. So it's, it's quite good. You could like, if you wanted to take it to the next level, you would have to use maybe a bit of displacement, but uh, this would eat a lot of uh, render time. So didn't really get the opportunity to do so. And if you just rework properly the lighting, you can get some really good looking results still. So that'll be it for the 3ds Max. Here, if we have a look at the, the base rendering, this is how it looked. And uh, here with the HDRI, so uh, we're starting from quite far. <laughs> so this is how it looked. This is a simple base adjustment on the, the lighting system here, which is that guy as well, which was a little bit too reflective in my opinion. Here we have uh, the rugs here are were a little bit too bright, so I uh, darkened them. Here is uh, just an overall light uh, contrast thing. Here is a bit of a dodge to make it much, much more bright in this area here because I wanted it to catch the eye away more. And here is a bit of burn tool as well to get some more variation on the ground and in some part of the the um, concrete sorry also here was the uh the backdrop that was uh, desaturated and lightened a little bit uh just be careful when you add a backdrop to actually check your uh horizon basically so if we have a look at the, uh, these guys here are the uh fleeing point of or model and these guys here are fling point uh, these guys here sorry are the fling point for our backdrop image so it has to sort of fit then you can of course 
sort of play around with it a little, but be careful not to offset it too much because otherwise it's not going to look realistic at all. So that's it. Uh, then there were a little bit of reflection that was added because it was interesting to get some funny thing. The f funny thing as well is that this reflection was done uh, by actually merging uh, another part of this backdrop here with the actual image here inside the what we could see because here if I put it at 100% this is what is reflected but you would need the something to be seen as well and not just the HDRI so this is what has been added here still by using the same uh, height so that the, the perspective match matches so this was set to soft lights and uh, with the opacity a little bit lowered. Then there were the people integration. So here we have the guys here with a couple of curve adjustment layers and the shadows that were quite simple. I think there's also, yeah. This layer is just like um, you use your that guy and you just deform it so that you can um, sort of draw under some sort of like a ambient occlusion or um, sort of core shadow right next to the, the contact uh, area between your cutouts and your and the ground or the surfaces. And that way you get something that is way like if you don't have it, it sort of still looks like they're floating, but if you add it, they look okay. Also be careful to not paint in black, but to actually uh, use uh, the actual color of the shadow of the surface you're using. So here, this is the color you can use, for example. Just use the eyedropper. Uh, so that's it. And then there was a tiny bit of tweak as usual. Uh, this guy, I think it's just a color uh, camera row filter with a bit of clarity, vibrance. And I guess I changed temperature and the tint a little bit because I wanted to aim to some sort of a green looking image. There was then a bit of tonal contrast added, high key on the left because I wanted this to look extremely bright and a little bit of a bloom effect. That's why I also added the uh, soft focus here so that we have that kind of effect and then a cross processing over all over the whole image. The gradient map, uh, gradient map are fun. You can use them. Uh, wait, that guy here. Be careful to actually go there and load the um, which one are the photographic toning here because they have like some really interesting variant. And then you just have to set it to normal and lower the opacity. You can even try to play around with the blending modes. But here you can see it sort of gives an interesting blue tint to my image. Maybe it's a little bit too harsh, actually. But here you can see uh, how it works and how we managed to, to go from uh, here to that kind of image, which is way more interesting in terms of lighting and uh, hue and saturation. So that will be it for this image. Hopefully you've learned some interesting tips and uh, I'll see you in the next behind the scenes video. Bye guys.